in the uh, United States versus Bruin, in the, the Bruin test in 2020, this decision, this was one of the gun rights decisions that, that uh, basically made it possible for states to say anybody in the state can carry a concealed weapon without a permit, uh, among other things. And Clarence Thomas came up with this just absurd uh, test. Uh, it was like the NRA wrote it for him, um, that you had to have a historical analog to modern day uh, uh, policies, practices, and laws in order to uh, you know, uphold a, a contemporary law. And because there was no law back in the day that prevented people from owning guns, therefore you can't have a law today that prevents people from owning guns. So now in the United States versus Rahini, Rahimi, we've got this guy who uh, beat up his wife repeatedly, threatened her with a gun, shot his gun at five different people, including once at a traffic stop. Um, and she petitioned to have his gun taken away on a re under a red flag law. And the Fifth Circuit said, you can't do that because there were no red flag laws back in 1790. And there, and there were no laws against men beating their wives or killing their wives, uh, you know, or having guns if they had been beating their wives in 1790. And therefore, you can't have laws like that now. This is how absurd Clarence Thomas's decision was in this thing. I, I would say obscene as well. So, you know, they held the, they had the hearing uh, earlier in the week, and uh, it sounds like they're probably going to tweak Bruin. They're, they're going to tweak Clarence Thomas's decision. But, you know, up until the 1970s, literally nobody in America had, had any kind of serious thought at all that the Supreme Court protected your right to own a gun. Everybody understood that it was all about being able to defend ourselves against the British. The British had confiscated guns and they were quartering soldiers and that led to the Second and Third Amendment. This is what Chief Justice Warren Burger said in the, for the Supreme Court. He said, the gun lobby's interpretation of the Second Amendment is one of the greatest pieces of fraud, I repeat the word fraud, on the American people by special interest groups that I have ever seen in my lifetime. The real purpose of the Second Amendment was to ensure the state armies, the militia, would be maintained for the defense of the state. The very language of the Second Amendment refutes any argument that it was intended to guarantee every citizen an unfettered right to any kind of weapon he or she desires.